Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. So we've got a Resnor heater here. These things are getting to be more and more obscure. But we just got to light the pilot on this thing. It's the first uh, usage of the year. So right here, we have our gas valve and it's currently set to off. And in this case, we have a separate button for the pilot. So right here, our gas is on. So we press in this red button here to push through gas to the pilot. Sometimes you push this big main button here. So I'm going to go ahead and press this here now. And then we just... Did it light? Oh. Can you see where it's supposed to light? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to light right there. There we go, I got it lit. Yep, sure enough. Okay, so now you have to continue holding this button down for probably like a good 30 seconds or so. And the reason for that is that this uh, tube coming right out right there of the corner of the gas valve, actually that's the pilot tube there, but then where's the thermocouple tube? It's right. Oh yeah, there it is. So we have over here this copper line. It goes over here and that sure, goes to the thermocouple. <coughs> you can, and the flame is right in there. See the flame is blowing onto that little stick. Yep. That's the flame sensor, the thermal couple. Yep. And that's what allows the gas valve to know whether or not the pilot is on. So now I'm going to release it in three, two, one. We'll see if it stays on. And it did. It's still on. So now we're ready. <coughs> to turn the gas valve to on. Fire. And it lit. This is a naturally drafted unit. So it doesn't have a combustion blower. And uh, once the unit hits temperature, this fan should come on in the back here. We'll see if it wants to start or not. It's, it felt a little bit stiff, so not sure what to expect. We might be able to oil it a little bit. A lot of these motors, though, have sealed bearings, so they're not really designed for being oiled. To be oiled. Yeah. Do you see the... Uh, Switch that turns on the fan. There's the wires. No, I don't, but I sort of feel like the switch should be. So if the fan doesn't come on, it'll shut itself off. I think the switch is underneath this side cover. Okay, that's. Other way. Yeah, it's definitely. That motor is going to probably need to be replaced. We'll put some oil on it to get it working, set temporarily, and then probably have to order a motor. <clears throat> it's not really starting, is it? Nope. But if something goes really bad and Ruben cuts his arms off and bleeds out, thankfully we're close by to services to handle that sort of situation. Yep, nice and cozy. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder. I'm not sure. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. And the high limit did turn off the burners, so that's exactly what was supposed to happen. Now we're just trying to oil this motor up here. Does it does it feel like the fan has got power to it right now? There, it's got power now. Huh. It shut off for a second there, that's why it was spinning better. Yeah, sometimes they do that. It's kind of weird where... Oh, that's the thermal overload in the motor itself that's doing that. Because uh, if it doesn't spin, it can't cool properly. 
so the motor itself will cut in and out. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you in the next video. If this helped you, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below for more videos just like this one. All right, see ya.